I'm Maya Yen, and this is Behind the Scenes of the How Much Sadness Can You Swallow music video. So the song, How Much Sadness Can You Swallow, is about a nightmare I had where I woke up in a house and I didn't know where I was and I was living the same day over and over again with my memory being wiped overnight. Um, so it was really dark, <laughs> really disturbing. I knew I didn't want to just replicate the story of the song in the music video, um, but I did want to have the same kind of sense of threat and unease. So the story of the music video is essentially about this woman who wakes up in the middle of nowhere and she doesn't know where she is or how she got there. There's a sword by her. She's in this sort of strange white outfit and she's kind of stumbling through the countryside trying to figure out what she's trying to do. Um, and she sees something strange fall to earth and it triggers her memory. And she remembers that there's an alien invasion and she's got to fight it. But the weaponry she's kind of fighting against isn't physical. Um, it's almost as if the aliens have this psionic power where they can distort her reality or erode her memory. I've always really loved fencing gear and outfits. There's something really otherworldly and strange about them. So I thought visually they'd be great for some sort of <laughs> dystopic future where these aliens have landed and we have these warriors that kind of look like fencing athletes, basically. We mapped out a whole storyboard and had that ready to go. The opening scene where I'm kind of on this little bank and I wake up, we shot that on a reservoir in Derbyshire <laughs> and it was the middle of summer so there were tons of kids around, um, quite literally just out of shot. So if you heard the original audio on that footage, it would just be screaming kids. <laughs> really not the vibe we were going for but um, we just managed to kind of carve out a little bit of space and get some shots in between kids running by and people walking their dogs and stuff the hardest part of the shoot for me was running in like 30 degree heat. So not only are you trying to manage the sun coming into your camera, you're managing the heat on you as we're running through fields and open spaces. There's no shade. It's 29 degrees. <gasps> oh. How hot is it, James? Too hot. Yep. We very quickly discovered that shooting in that kind of heat was just miserable. I think on the first day, we'd gone out for three hours and probably got like four, four seconds of footage total, which was kind of like, oh my God, this is such a mammoth task that we've set for ourselves. And it was really overwhelming. It's seven o'clock on day one of shooting and we've probably shot for like, I don't know, like an hour and a half, two hours, I'm sweating. And we've probably got about four seconds of running footage. <laughs> hey it's four more seconds than we had at the start of today so that's great but i think as it went on we kind of learned to be less perfectionist and just kind of go let's do one or two takes and then move on and then we managed to kind of cover more ground once we started doing that i was also trying to shoot like behind the scenes stuff as well on my phone we had a little tripod for my phone so i was running during the shoot running back to my tripod hitting record running back to my starting point then running across running back going back and checking my phone it was exhausting so that was really tiring for me but it was also really tiring for James. One of the hardest things shooting in that environment, especially for somebody who doesn't do well in the heat generally, was carrying all the equipment and then also running beside Maya throughout the recording. I was shooting with a gimbal setup with the camera as well. So it was quite a lot of forearm work. I definitely benefited from it at the end, but um, I, my arms weren't thanking me on the drive home. <sighs> Hey, we've got something. Woo. Thank God for that. So we're doing the slow-mo shots in this field of hay bales today. Hopefully I do Baywatch justice with this slow-mo running, who knows? <laughs> Baywatch.
The bridge is a really stark contrast to the rest of the song, which is all kind of very, um, it's very bass heavy and energetic. The bridge by contrast is very light and floaty and dreamscapey. And for me, in the story of the music video, that section was <laughs> essentially a distorted version of reality that the aliens have imposed upon that character. So what she's experiencing is sort of like a dreamlike, beautiful version of what she's actually experiencing, which is quite harrowing and exhausting. So it's designed to distract her on her journey. So <laughs> I really wanted to have me floating. <laughs> When Maya approached me about the floating scene, I had a very clear vision of what I wanted to do and how we were going to go about doing that. So um, I bought some apple boxes and we went out the back garden and just did some test shoots. They worked out really well. Um, so straight away from that, we went out and found a location that was going to work. It's like a little enchanted forest. I'm going to try and film there-ish. I don't know. So we got a shot of me on two wooden blocks pretending to float and then we got a shot of the background without me in the blocks uh, and then they were kind of composited together so it looks like I'm floating. <laughs> As we were shooting we moved locations a lot and we still had the end of the video to shoot and we'd always planned for it to be in the English countryside somewhere and for that alien diamond to be on a hill. Um, and we ended up being by the coast. And we just thought, let's shoot it on a beach. <laughs> like that would actually be really cool. It feels like you're at the end of the world when you're on a beach, which feels even better for what we're trying to shoot here. And the dunes of Crosby Beach are so otherworldly. There's something so alien about them on their own. You could go and take a picture of anything there and it would feel like you're on another planet. I really wanted to have the alien thing at the end to be a diamond, sort of a glowing diamond shape. Alien spaceships are always just like a big block of metal in film, so I thought it'd be more alien to have something that didn't quite look like that and maybe even emitted light uh, so it feels really other, really strange and you're looking at it not quite sure how it works. James again went away and uh, created it. Maya had a very clear outline of what she wanted the alien object to be and it was very easy for me to take a visual representation away from her and start to look at how we could develop that in 3D. I hadn't really done any 3D compositing before though, so that's a completely different workflow for me. So um, it was really interesting to look at the different textures we could use for glass, looking at the different render platforms we could use. And once we got it down to that point, it was uh, just a matter of compositing it into the shot. When we shot the final beach scene, I wasn't reacting to obviously a diamond um, on the beach, it was just a light, but I had to look at it like, oh my God, what is this crazy thing? <laughs> Which was kind of fun to do though. That's a wrap on Helmet Sadness. Finally. <laughs> and it took us like two months. <laughs> this is the, the alien orb <laughs> in real life. It's just a light on a beach. Look at the sunset though, it's insane. Look at that. Holy guacamole. So glad I'll never have to run again. I will never run again. I've always been a really big fan of sci-fi and contemporary horror. Um, if you've seen films like Annihilation or Melancholia, Arrival, there are references to a lot of those sci-fi films in the music video itself which I'm sure you'll be able to spot. But uh, for me, I think sci-fi has this uncanny ability to really draw our humanity into sharp focus in this really icy and precise but romantic kind of way. There's something really beautiful about it. I'm really proud of the fact that we managed to do it pretty much just us two and Chris as well on the grade. Tiny team, basically no budget, and we managed to create essentially a sci-fi short for a music video. The thing I'm most proud of 
from this whole project really is the team. We've been in a time where we've been stuck in our houses, we've been unable to see friends, family, but being able to create something of this calibre, um, I'm not saying it's a feature film, but it's something that I'm really proud of and it's the highest quality thing I think I've produced. That's also a big props to our colourist, Chris Franklin, who's done an incredible job and I was able to colour the film for us. We couldn't have done it without him, so thanks Chris. We've all lived through this really difficult time in the past two years um, where we've had to deal with a lot of anxiety um, and stress. A lot of us are still fighting with that, so there are all these kind of cerebral psionic things that we're having to battle in quite a literal sense. So I think <laughs> all of that kind of came out in the music video subconsciously, uh, watching it back now kind of post pandemic. But yeah, really it's just, it's a love letter to sci-fi firstly, but it's also just about the human condition. Yeah, I think ultimately it's just about getting through it. <laughs> Please check out the video if you can, if you've not already subscribed to my yen. And if you're looking forward to the next music video, I'm sure we'll be releasing something in the next three years. See you in 2026.